Hello everybody, Elliot here from ETJ English. Today I'm here to give you some guidance on how to learn pronunciation. The reason why is because, well, when I speak to most of my students, my subscribers, their biggest problem is never what they're doing, it's more how they're doing it and why they're doing it. These are the questions we need to ask before we try to improve or change our pronunciation, our accent and take it seriously. The first thing I want you to ask yourself, I want you to write this question down, ask yourself this question, and give yourself some answers. Why am I trying to change my accent, or why am I trying to improve my pronunciation? Are you an actor? Are you trying to improve for an audition, for a performance, for a movie? If that's the case, intense sessions are going to be very important. You're not trying to permanently change your accent every time you open your mouth. Instead, you want to be able to switch. You want to be able to just change to the British accent or whatever accent it is when you need it. So the way you learn would be different to someone who, for example, is trying to permanently change their accent. So this leads on to my second category, the British accent, or let's say the accent fanatic. Are you a huge fan of RP? Are you a huge fan of American English? Do you just want that accent? Do you want to be able to just open your mouth and have muscle memory and just produce the sounds that make you sound like you're a modern RP speaker or whatever type of speaker you want to be? This is the more long-term kind of goal and it will be something you'd be working on for yeah a very long time but it obviously is the most rewarding especially if you have a huge passion uh, a lust for this accent it's amazing when i see my students slowly change each sound sound by sound they slowly gain more of this accent and they create the muscle memory and it's a really fascinating thing to watch and to help with and the third category is someone who is just trying to improve for accent reduction. Maybe you have some thick sounds in your accent or some really um, annoying sounds that bother you. Sounds or techniques which make it difficult for your listener to follow what you're saying. Maybe they always have to say, sorry, what was that? What did you say? And this can get really annoying. It can affect communication, it can affect friendships. And that's why we would need accent reduction reducing the problematic sounds in your accent so that you can communicate better. This is something we need to do before we do anything, but you can just stop at accent reduction. You don't have to do more. After the accent reduction, you could then work on the British accent or work on a whatever accent. The second question I want you to ask yourself before we start going into the techniques is, what accent do you like? Do you love modern received pronunciation? My accent, the accent I teach. Do you adore a particular American accent? Or do you like the Australian accent? Do you like an accent from Edinburgh? Do you like the Scouse accent? What accent do you love? Oh, and I'm so sorry to all the snowflakes out there if I didn't mention your accent today. I know this may have ruined your day and you may want to write a very angry comment below, but I'm so sorry. I just can't mention every accent in this video. All I want to say is, Choose your favourite and don't just think, oh, everybody loves this accent, so I'm going to pick this one. What accent do you like? Tell me in the comments below. I'd love to know all the different accents you like. So now we need to talk about the methods. How are you going to approach your learning? How are you going to start improving? The first thing to understand is that learning English is different to learning pronunciation. Learning English is more about your brain about memory, remembering grammar, remembering vocabulary, remembering rules, right? Pronunciation is muscle-based. It's just like learning to play the guitar. You have to keep practicing until you remember, you know, you're looking, uh, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this, and then eventually, oh, I can do this without looking. Oh, I can close my eyes and I can play this song. We are training your muscles to remember things, muscle memory. So the more you practice, the more your muscles start to get comfortable. So because of this, we don't want to do long two-hour sessions on pronunciation training. 
For acting, that's quite good. But if we're trying to permanently change the accent or trying to produce some muscle memory, it's more important to do short sessions throughout the day. So, for example, you could do 10 minutes of practice just speaking, focusing on one sound or one technique while you're in the shower. Maybe you could work on your intonation whilst reading a book uh, to your child or reading a book in the morning to yourself. Read it out loud and practice your intonation or one vowel sound or, or something you're working on right now. Maybe in the evening before you go to bed, just create some sentences in your mind and just say them to yourself in the mirror. However you want to practice, find what works for you. Make sure you also incorporate some listening practice. Listen to TV shows, podcasts, and focus on that one thing that you're working on, whichever sound it may be or whichever technique, and imitate the person you're listening to. So short sessions throughout the day to work on your muscle memory. The most important two words in this learning process, muscle memory. Firstly, is your accent stress-timed or is it syllable-timed? I won't explain what this means today, but English is a stress-timed language, which means the way that we speak is very different to those who have syllable timing in their speech. We have important words and we make them more obvious uh, and the less important words are more relaxed. This can be a big thing to learn for people who have syllable time languages, such as Italian or Spanish speakers. Is your language tonal, like Mandarin or Thai, where you change the tone on a word and it will change what the word is? Whereas in English, what we do is we change the tone and it changes the feeling. We can sound happy, sad, confused. We can sound excited, sarcastic, like we're asking a question. And we do all of this with our intonation. You know, I could say, really? or I could say, really? Okay, changing the tone will change the effect. Is this something that you're not so sure about? Okay, intonation is something you also need to work on for accent reduction. Look at the vowels in your language. Are there any vowels in your accent which are the same in, let's say, modern RP, which you're learning? Compare the phonetics in your language to the language you're learning. Usually there will be some phonetics in, in British English which are very, very different or not even included in your native accent. So those would be ones you'll definitely want to look at. Compare them, look for differences and similarities. So once you've looked at all of these differences, you now need to start working on things. Where to start? Well, the best place to start is always stress and intonation. This is like your foundation. This is where you begin building. Okay, so imagine a big skyscraper. We're building a huge, massive skyscraper. Um, but if the, the bottom, the foundation, the thing which holds the whole building together is not strong enough, everything will collapse. Stress is your foundation. It's your rock. It's what will make people understand you the most. Even if you're pronouncing loads of vowel sounds wrong, if you are stressing correctly, it will make it easier for your listener to understand you. Intonation in particular is best improved with listening practice. So listen to podcasts, TV shows, radio, YouTube videos, and just listen for the tones. Listen to the ways they go up and down. And if you're taking a course or you're learning with a teacher, you'll know why they are going up and down, changing their tones on different words. If not, just train your ear to start kind of picking it up. It's like a song you hear on the radio. The more you hear it, the more it gets stuck in your head and you start just singing it without realizing. That's what intonation is. It's just something you pick up from people around you and the things you listen to. So immerse yourself in the accent and pick up the tones. When it comes to sounds, I strongly recommend you work on one at a time. So you could start with the schwa sound, which is one of the most important sounds to British English. Uh, in word like about or teacher. And practice it, find loads of words with it, find lists of words with it. Do listening practice and listen. Every time you think you hear the schwa sound, check in the dictionary. Does it? Fantastic. Add it to your list, okay? And then start making a big list practicing sentences and words involving the schwa sound. Think about this sound everywhere you go. When you're talking to someone, only focus on that one sound. And this is why I say only one sound at a time, because if you're focusing on too many sounds at once, <laughs> 
there's too much to think about. The language, the vocabulary, the grammar, and loads of sounds. No, that's not going to help you improve. Keep that one sound as the one thing you're working on. It's your whole life, and it's all you're thinking about when you speak, apart from the words, obviously. And then you can stop, pause, correct yourself. Don't be afraid to correct yourself. And slowly, the more you correct yourself and think about that sound, you'll notice that your body starts to kind of produce the sound for you. You've trained your muscles now, so now you can move on to another sound. Remember, we're starting with accent reduction, so maybe focus on the sounds you have the biggest problems with. Of course, you can compare maybe two sounds at the same time. Let's say you've spent some time working on the a ah sound, but you find you often pronounce it as e. Eh because that's one of your issues. You might have a problem with had and head, man and men. Well, if that is the case, start comparing the two sounds. Create loads of minimal pair lists where you have these words, man, men, sand, send, and create some sentences. Look out for these sounds when you're speaking. Correct yourself, as I said. Slowly make your way through the sounds brick by brick in this skyscraper, which we're slowly building taller and taller very slowly. One of my favorite things to explain to my students is to use your ears, your eyes, and your brain when you practice. Ears, listening practice. Listen to everything. Spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes, some point in your day just listening to a podcast. Don't think about anything, just think about that one sound that you're working on. Write down, check in the dictionary, create lists, make sentences, and then practice. Eyes reading practice, maybe when you're reading a book in the evening before bed, or you're reading a web page, a news page, and the first time you read, maybe read it for pleasure, just read it, because you want to read it. Then read it a second time, and just look for the one sound, or the one thing you're working on. Maybe it's where the stress should be, maybe it's where you could put some intonation, maybe it's the a ah sound, or the i sound, just look for that sound and use the dictionary. Have it online next to you, Cambridge Dictionary, I recommend. Search for the word, see if it has that sound in it. Okay, create your big list. Brain, think about words or phrases you use a lot in your daily life. Do they have this sound or this technique in it? Fantastic, practice it, perfect it. Think about common words you say a lot, make sentences with them. Or just look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Just speak freely, because when we're reading, our intonation is different. So we do need that free speech practice as well, where we sound more natural, more conversational. This is why there are so many pronunciation courses available. Not just mine, you can look for whichever one you want. But if you like me, you like my accent, I have a, a, a course available. And the reason why it's had such great reviews is because of the fact that you have all of the learning content, which you can watch whenever you want, right? You can just watch a lesson and then, okay, I've watched this lesson, now it's time to practice. Okay, so you have all of the material, you can watch the lesson again, you don't have to wait for a Skype lesson, or you don't have to wait for a private lesson. But the other bonus is that you can contact me with voice messages to get corrections whenever you want. So your teacher is there to correct you whenever. That's the key, okay? The key is to have constant correction to have constant guidance. Oh, your tongue's a bit too high. Oh, your tongue's a bit too low. We need that. And there's not enough time in a short lesson to, to do that and to wait every week for. So that's why I stopped teaching on Skype. I started off by teaching on Skype and it was great. I met some great people, but the improvement was too slow and I knew I could make my students learn faster. So not just my course, there are other courses available. There are apps available where you can actually talk to people. I think there's one called Hello Talk. They're not sponsoring this video, but there's, I use them for learning Spanish. And uh, you can send voice recordings to people who are native and they could maybe tell you, oh, that doesn't sound right. You know, if you tell them that you're working on your pronunciation, then they'll give you a few corrections on that. And I highly recommend that if you're also learning English, you treat that separate. So you learn English, and then you learn pronunciation separately, just like learning Spanish and maths, two different subjects. They need to be learned separately, ideally.
So that's about it. Hopefully this gives you more of an idea of how pronunciation learning works, maybe some methods you could take. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can join my course by uh, clicking the link in the description. Go to etjenglish.com. I'd be happy to welcome you on the course. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section below too. That's me done for another video. I'll see you next time. Cheers guys. Bye.